Tony is not a stop gap, but Tony is serving the Lord so wonderfully. So put your hands together and welcome Tony, please. Praise God, church. Hallelujah. Amen. It brings me, it brings such immense joy to share the word of God in Church for All Nations, Dubai. Because this is where I grew up spiritually. Amen. And I just want to thank God for, for this. God has certainly deposited a word in my heart. And I also want to thank Pastor Srini. You know, over the years, he trained me and taught me the word of God. And so it's, it's a joy to share the word while he is there. So I thank God for that as well. Amen. The word that God has put in my heart, the title of my message is this. Dominate the storm. Everyone repeat after me and say, dominate the storm. Dominate the storm. Amen. Last week when pastor was sharing the message, he spoke something which was very profound. And he said, you were darkness at one point of time, but now you are light. Therefore, no matter how dark your storm is, if the light of God is in you, you will overcome and dominate every storm in our life. So I want to pick up from that thread and bring to you God's word. And I want to speak to you essentially from the Gospel of Matthew chapter 14, verse 22 to 32. It's a very, very familiar passage of scripture. Let me read it for you. Immediately, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side, while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. And when the evening came, he was alone there. But the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, it's a ghost. And they cried out for fear. But immediately, Jesus spoke to them, saying, be of good cheer, it is I, do not be afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, come. And when Peter had come down from the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink, he cried out saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand, and caught him and said to him, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. Here there is a storm being spoken here. And we all know the scripture here. The Bible says, immediately Jesus made his disciples to go on to the other side. I want to start with the correct perspective of who God is. God does not send us into a storm. The other side, before I get to what the other side is, when the Bible says there is an other side, there must be a this side. So the Gospel of Matthew 14, verse 20, it says, the multitudes were fully fed and there were 12 baskets remaining. In other words, this side, there was abundance or overflow. What happened at the other side? The same chapter, verse 36, says, As many as touched him were, perfect, were healed or made perfectly well. So God does not send us to a storm. Our destination is not a storm. Our destination is into perfect wellness. Amen. He sends us from a place of overflow, from a place of abundance to perfect wellness. Hallelujah. 
So I want to start with that correct perspective of who God is. God is not a person who wants his children to suffer. Amen? Now, you may ask me, hey, but we are facing storms. That's true. In John chapter 16, verse 33, Jesus says like this, Be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. In this world you love troubles, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. This world that you and me, we are living, is a fallen world, has got a fallen nature. But Jesus overcame this world. Hallelujah. Now if Jesus overcame this world, Paul picks up that threat from Romans chapter 8, verse 35. It says like this, For who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, or peril of sword? And verse 37, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. I want to repeat, through him who loved us, we are all more than conquerors. Amen? Please repeat after me and say, more than conquerors. So, why is then the storm given? Why is the storm there? Why does certain storms are allowed in our life? Certain storms are allowed in our life because the Lord wants the leader in us to come out. The leader in you and me need to come out. That is why, you know, certain storms are present in our life. But Jesus is saying, I have overcome the world. I am an overcomer. You and me, we are more than overcomers. More than overcomers. But when we read this more than overcomer, many a times we think of this as a title. But you see, suppose I'm, I'm doing a class on mountaineering. I tell the people, hey, this is how you climb Mount Everest. But the thing is, I will not have any credibility because I have not even climbed a single mountain. But imagine Sir Edmund Hillary or Tenzing Norgay, who were the first who climbed Mount Everest, is teaching. What is the difference? They were conquerors who conquered. In other words, the Lord does not want this to be a mere title. Leadership with mere title is not, you know, it's not going to take us anywhere. We need to be conquerors who conquer. Now with this in our mind, because leadership is not a mere title, but it is an experience which brings credibility. A conqueror who has not conquered lacks credibility, but a conqueror who has conquered brings credibility. So the Lord wants us to conquer because that becomes a testimony, that becomes a credibility unto us. Now you and me, we may be facing different kind of storms. We may be facing financial storms, health storms, relationship storms, or any other kind of storm, you name it. But the biggest assurance that you and me, we can have in any kind of storm is this. In Matthew 14, verse 24 and 25, it says, The boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Verse 25, Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. So no matter how boisterous the wind is, no matter how difficult the storm is, your biggest assurance and my biggest assurance is this, Jesus is there in the storm with us. Not only that he is there in the storm with us, he is towards me, he is towards us. Point to yourself and say, he is towards me in the storm. 
He is not against me in the storm. He is towards me in the storm. I want to come to the central passage here. Verse 28. And Peter answered him and said to him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. We know what Peter said. But I'm not just interested in what Peter said, why Peter said what he said. To understand this, we must understand the personality of Peter. See, one thing with Peter is, even though he had a lot of frailties, he always carried a desire for the Lord. That really set him apart from everybody else. He carried a desire for the Lord. When you carry a desire for the Lord, you will desire the word from the Lord. You will desire the way to the Lord. And I want to decipher verse 20 a little bit. Peter is saying, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on water. So what is Peter asking the Lord? He is saying, Lord, if it is you, command me. So he is seeking the word. He is desiring the word in the storm. He is desiring the word. Not only he is desiring the word, he is saying, allow me to come over the waters. He is desiring the word. He is desiring the way to Jesus. But hinging between this, the word and the way to Jesus is Jesus himself. Because Peter is saying, command me to come to you. Peter's desire was always Jesus. When you have a desire for the Lord, when your desire is for Jesus, you will desire the word from Jesus. You will desire the way to Jesus. And Jesus himself and Peter, they talk about desire in another section. In Matthew 16, verse 24, Jesus says like this, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. See, I've taught discipleship in this church a few years back, along with others. You can teach discipleship. There is something that we cannot teach. What is that? That is desire. Desire cannot be taught. It must be caught. It must be in us. Peter always had desire. His desire did not start in the storm. He always had desire before the storm. He, the storm just accentuated that desire. Now Peter, it says in 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 2, it says, it says like this, we need to desire the word of God as to how a baby desires the milk of a mother. See, that is the desire the Lord is looking at you and me. Are we desiring the word of God like that? So Peter, he's speaking from his own life, desire that way as newborn babe, desire the pure milk of the word. You know, you and me, we need to desire the word. Hallelujah. So Jesus, when he's saying, you know, to be a disciple, the first qualification to be a disciple is not teachability, it is desire. Amen. Amen. Only desiring people can follow the Lord the way the Lord wants. Because desire will ensure that no matter whether your prayers have been answered or your prayers have, uh, you are miracle or no miracle, you will always follow because you are, you are not basing your relationship with Jesus on an output. You are basing your relationship with Jesus on desire for him. Let me give you an example from my own life. 
In my college days, there was a girl in my class whom I loved. And in the first, I was in the, in the, in the college the four years. In the first year, I proposed to her with a red rose. In the second year, I proposed to her with a yellow rose. In the third year, I proposed to her, the same girl, by the way, with a white rose. I'll come to that, Pastor. <laughs> the fourth year, I proposed to her with a multicolored rose with multiple effects. I'll tell you what that is. See, all four were rejected. But the point that I want to drive here is this. If you have a desire for a person, it is not based on the output, it is based on the person. Amen? Now, what was I desiring? So when I proposed to her, I was desiring the word from her. What word would I, was I desiring? I was desiring the word, I love you from her. But that never came, I was desiring the word. So next year, when I proposed, I took the yellow rose. Why? Not only I was desiring the word from her, I understood her favorite color is yellow. So I desired, I decided to seek way to her heart, so I gave a yellow rose. Amen? Third year, I discovered something more about her. I discovered that she is a person of peace. Now, worldwide, the color of peace is white. So I gave her a white rose. Now, in the fourth year, we were all students of the same class. She taught electromagnetic theory, electromagnetic waves. Okay? So I thought now I need to be a little bit more smarter. Maybe out of my smartness, you know, she will say yes to me. So I gave a multicolored rose and and here, and I, because she was very good in electromagnetic theory, when I proposed to her, I gave her special effects. That is, I proposed to her over the college radio. Now the point here is this. I was seeking the word and the way to her heart. Amen? Not only the word I was seeking, the way. Like Peter, he was seeking the word. He was seeking the way. Everything hinged on Christ focus of Peter was on Jesus himself. When you desire Jesus in your life, you will desire the word, you will desire the way into Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Luke 19, verse 3 and 4. Now one of my most favorite in, and inspirational characters in the Bible is Zacchaeus. The Bible says he sought to see who Jesus was. In other words, he desired to see Jesus. But he could not for two reasons. He faced a limitation. Everyone say limitation. He faced a limitation. What kind of limitation? He faced an internal limitation and he faced an external limitation. The external limitation was pressed by the crowd or the crowd around him was a limitation and he had a limitation of shortness. But you see, Zacchaeus was, was a person of desire. When the desire for Jesus rose in his heart, the Bible says he ran ahead. Amen. Everyone say, run ahead. He ran ahead, which means when the desire for the Lord rises in our heart, we will break from every limitation. We will break from internal limitations, and we will break from external limitations. Amen. 
He faced internal limitation because of his shortness. I don't know, maybe you may be feeling I am short in some area. Maybe you're feeling that I do not know English. Or maybe you're feeling I am not good looking. Or maybe you're feeling there is something short in me. But the Lord, but when the desire is come up, when the desire comes up, or somebody has imposed something upon you, you and me will break away from every kind of limitations. Let me give you an example from my own life. Me and Bino, we are in the 19th year of our marriage. Praise God. One year before I got married, I gave an advertisement in the newspaper like this. Something like this. If you want to get married to me, the first condition is, GCC candidates need not apply. And then there were other, other conditions. Now, in other words, I set a geographical limit for myself. Amen? Now, I also the very, very strict arranged marriage. Why I say strict, I, uh, I remember even when I got engaged, I wanted to, uh, to, uh, to touch a shoulder and take a picture. My father-in-law is saying, hey, not now, after marriage. <laughs> so you see, now when the proposal came, I was, I was working in Hyderabad, India, and I was working in an MNC. I was just getting a decent pay, but it was, it, honestly speaking, it wasn't enough for a family. Now, her picture came, my mom said, hey, this is a girl who is good looking, but then I had so many other conditions, the first condition itself, she is failing. But then, when I saw her picture, a desire rose in my heart, amen, desire rose in my heart. When you have a desire in your heart, you will break your internal limitations and you will break your external limitations. What kind of internal limitations did I break? One, at that, of course, I didn't know the scriptures at that time. You know, I was thinking to myself, hey, I do not have enough money. And then I was thinking, you know, all my friends said, you will never marry a beautiful girl. And all what they said was in the back of my mind. But then, desire rose. Now, when desire rises in your heart, you know, there were other limitations that I faced. See, I did not like my lips. The pastor usually says that he did not like his nose. For him, it is nose. For me, it was lips. You know, for eight years of my life, from the age of 17 to 25, I would put glycerin on my lips for somehow it to, to add some pixels to it. So I was trying to break limitations. I, I, I could not. But when the desire rose in my heart, I forgot about all my limitations. Amen. And not only that, there were limitations from from the office, so many things were there around. But I tell you, when desire is there in our heart, every kind of limitations we will break. When you and me, we have a desire for the Lord, every kind of limitations, whether it is internal limitations or imposed limitations, we are going to break. Today is a day when desire for the Lord is going to rise up in CFAN. Now, the reason for you and me to dominate is this, to have that God desire. But it's not just desire, it is faith. Desire with faith is a very potent combination. Because Peter here, in verse 26 to 28, he was a part of disciples 
who were gripped by fear. They were all gripped by fear. But Peter, when he heard the word of God, when he received the word of God, he broke from fear into faith. So all the disciples were part of the same boat, but Peter heard and Peter actioned. So my point is this. It is not just a hearing faith. It is the active faith which is important. In Romans 10, 17, it says, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So we are hearing or we are having active faith as I'm preaching to you today, this afternoon, you are hearing, the, you are having the hearing faith. But that alone is not enough. We need to move into an active faith. In James chapter 2, verse 22, it says like this, do you see that the faith was working together with his works and by works, faith was made perfect. You see, the hearing faith became an active faith or faith was put into work. In our storm, we must not forget to ask big in the storm. You can ask big in the storm only by faith. So Peter decided, I want to ask big in the storm. You know, he desired to be like Jesus. His desire was to be like Jesus. So he, he dared to ask big in the storm. Dared to ask big in the storm and dared to do a big in the storm. Your storm is not deciding your destiny, but what you ask from the Lord and what you desire from the Lord will determine your destiny. Now, how much time did it take for Peter to shift from fear to faith? It takes only a moment for you and me to shift from fear to faith. You don't have to wait one year to move from fear to faith. The moment you put your faith into action, you, it is like a gear shift of a manual car. You move from fear into faith. It takes only a moment. Everyone say a moment. It takes only a moment to move from fear to faith. But he said, Peter, he starts walking over the waters in the storm. And then he loses his focus. He looks at the winds. He looks at the power of the winds and he starts sinking. What does that tell us? It tells us this. If you are slipped in your pursuit, what we only think that we need to do is confess. Peter said, Lord, help me. The Bible says the help was immediate. It was immediate. So when you and me, we confess, the help becomes immediate in your storm. So you move from fear to faith. And if you are slipped on the way, the only thing that we need to do is confess. So when we confess, the help becomes immediate. Now, that actually tells us it's the grace of God. The grace of God brought Peter back to the level of Jesus. So what is grace of God? Grace of God is uplifting us from where we have fallen to the level of Jesus. Not a lower standard, but to his standard. Peter has risen to the standard and to the level of Jesus. Even though he fell, you know, the Bible says his confession raised him to the level of Jesus. Now Peter, Jesus asked Peter, you of little faith, why did you doubt? It seems like Jesus was admonishing Peter. But actually, it is this. Grace is not a life without accountability. Grace is a life with accountability. Peter, Jesus was holding Peter accountable to his potential. His potential was to be like Jesus. Amen. 
the potential of peter was to be like jesus the potential of everyone sitting here whether you are a pastor or a leader or anybody all our potential is to be like jesus hallelujah brothers and sisters we are accountable to our potential and my final point is this if you want to desire to be somebody desire to be jesus in the storm amen everyone say jesus in the storm why did i say jesus in the storm see when jesus was in the storm everyone saw jesus or all his inner circle saw jesus am i right they all saw jesus now when they all saw jesus one of them got inspired one of them had the desire now what is this what i want to say if you want you and me we want to be jesus in our in the storm we need to be transparent about our storm many a times culturally we don't want to tell about our storm to other people we don't want to say whether we are facing a financial storm or a job storm or a health storm or a family storm we don't want to say that i am not saying to publicize to the entire world but here the lord is saying he he was transparent to his inner circle who was in a circle whom you are trying to influence jesus was transparent to whom he was trying to influence so if you and me we want to be jesus in the storm we got to be transparent about our storms and when we overcome that storm every peter who is there in the boat is going to get disconnected from the boat and come on into the waters because when they see us overcome there's a peter who is going to jump out from the boat so i now want to conclude or to summarize dominate the storm everyone say dominate the storm how are, how are we going to dominate the storm number 1 storm is not our destination our destination is the other side perfect wellness we are not called to be consumed by the storm we are called to dominate the storm that the leader in us will come out in the storm we are not alone in the storm jesus is with us he is towards us in the storm that's our greatest assurance desire is the first qualification of a disciple and growth have a desire for the lord desire the word and the way to the lord fear clouds us from his presence but faith clears us into his presence it takes only a moment for us to move from fear to faith in the same way it takes only a moment for us to slip back into fear but if we have we need to confess when we confess grace of god lifts us to the level of jesus grace is not without accountability we are all accountable to our potential desire to be jesus in the storm this means transparency about our storm that we may influence the people in the boat that peters will come out seeing us like jesus in the storm I want to pray with you today. What do I want to pray? If this message has impacted you, has touched you. I believe that you are having a desire for the Lord. Desire has risen in your heart.
And I also believe that limitations have been broken today. Internal limitations and external limitations have been broken today. I want to agree with you and pray with you today, right now. And I request you to respond to the word. There will be people standing here right now. I just call upon the pastors, also the ninth hour team. Hey, we served Lord in Sri Lanka and many other places, but we can serve God not only we have to serve God not only there, but in the church. I request the pastors and the ninth hour team to just be here and if you agree with this in prayer and if you had a desire today about the Lord I want to agree with you in prayer can we all rise up to our feet I request the pastors and uh, the ninth hour team to just be here. And the Lord has spoken to you, ministered to you. They're going to pray with you and agree with you about the desire which has risen in your heart for the Lord. And what you're broken away from, your limitations. Father, I want to say thank you for this wonderful, wonderful time of the word. Lord, every storm we dominate, we thank you. Because you have made us to be more than overcomers. You have made, you and, you have made us to be an overcomer through you, Lord. So we believe, Lord, that with a desire in our heart, no matter how bad the storm is, we are going to dominate every storm before us. And I pray over the church. And I pray, Lord, that desire rise up in the church today. Desire for the Lord to serve God rise up in the church today in the mighty name of Jesus. I also pray over the online people who are watching online. I pray, Father God, desire rise in them. That they will serve God. They would have a desire to serve, to be like Jesus. And every limitation like Zacchaeus, even though he was short, even though there was a crowd around him, he broke away from that limitations. Father, we thank you for this wonderful time. And we prophesy over the church. We speak over the church. We, dis we speak, Father God, that desire to serve you rise and every limitations be broken. Amen. And even as the choir is going to continue to lead us in our songs, some of our leaders are going to be here, including the prayer team. Please join here. We're going to pray over the people. We're going to pray. Even after the service, we're going to pray. And we're going to agree with you about the desire which has risen on your heart and the limitations which has been broken. Every one of us, we will dominate the storm. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. I now under your way. Cover me within your mighty hands. Hide me now. Hide me now. Under. Your mighty hands 
When the oceans rise and thunders roar, and I will soar with you about the storm, Father, you are King over the floods, and I will be as we continue to worship if you need prayers please step friend anointed intercessors are here to pray for you let's continue to worship the Lord find rest my soul in Christ again find rest my soul in Christ alone know his power in Father, we want to thank you for this awesome time that you have brought us together to worship you, to hear from your word how, like Jesus, we can dominate every storm in our lives. We want to thank you for reminding us that storm is not the destination, but the other side is, even though we go through the storm. We want to thank you for Tony brought the word, we pray for your blessing to be upon him. May your glory rest and abide upon each of us. We thank you. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May the grace of the Lord Jesus, the love of God our Father, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forever. Amen. Amen.